everybody. Welcome back to the Bible Breakdown with your host, Pastor Brandon. And today, today's a tough one. If I really had a title for today, it would be, Be Careful What You Ask For, as we go through Numbers chapter 11. So before we get into this, I want to make sure, and if you've been enjoying these, you've been enjoying the content we've been putting out, make sure if you're watching on YouTube that you like this video, you subscribe to this channel. Also, I want to tell you about something new that I'm doing, and that is you can go to brandoncannon.com. And you can subscribe to my weekly newsletter. And I'm switching it over toward more, you know, Bible breakdown podcast type of material as maybe you do a little bit deeper dive on some stuff and go a little further into the text. And I just got a lot of ideas and I would love to hear your feedback on it. And so I would love for you to go to brandoncannon.com and go right there on the front page and subscribe to my weekly newsletter so we can continue to go deeper into this. And I just, I, I love this idea of creating a community we can read through God's Word together, and we're going to need it after a day like today because the idea behind this is, man, in one way, it's really easy to get mad at the Israelites going, oh my goodness, what are you doing? But I see myself so much in this. So what we're going to do is, is remember the context. Context is king. And when you realize where they are, you realize what's going on. And the nation of Israel, they are now just a little bit removed from being Egyptian bondage. They have come out, they went to Mount Sinai, they received the covenant from the Lord, they got all this great stuff happening, and now it's time. In the last chapter, they made these trumpets to blow them to kind of give directions, and they see the pillar of fire by night, cloud by day, and it is the, the holy GPS, you know, the presence of God that is leading them, and now they're on the way to the promised land. So watch what happens and see if you can identify maybe yourself a little bit in this as well. Kind of understand what they're doing. Not be, not be so quick to get angry like I do when I read this. Okay, here we go. If you have your NLT Bibles open, get your coffee ready. We're going to jump right into Numbers chapter 11. And once again, the overall idea, be careful what you ask for. Here we go. Verse 1. Soon the people began to complain about their hardship, and the Lord heard everything they said. Then, can we just pause? They're complaining about their hardship because, remember, as soon as that cloud moves, they got to move. So they pack up. I mean, it doesn't say anything about that God gives them like a warning. Like, can you imagine if all of a sudden the cloud just kind of just maybe change shape a little bit or whatever, kind of give them an idea, you know, you know, the next day it's kind of in like poofy, you know, poofiness. Okay, we're going to leave soon. None of that. It just picks up. So I got to pick up and move. That's fine for the first day or two. But after two weeks, I having to get up and move, you're getting a little frustrated. But I love this, that it said, and the Lord heard everything they said. Then the Lord's anger blazed against them, and he sent a fire to rage among them, and he destroyed some of the people on the outskirts of the camp. Verse 2, then the people screamed to Moses for help, and when he prayed to the Lord, the fire stopped. After that, the area was known as Tibera, which means the place of burning, because the fire of the Lord had burned among them there. God don't play around. Verse 4, then the foreign rabble who were traveling with the, the Israelites began to crave the good things of Egypt. And the people of Israel also began to complain. Oh, for some great meat, they explained. We remember the fish we used to eat for free in Egypt. And we had all the cucumbers and melons and leeks and onions and garlic we wanted. But now our appetites are gone. And all we have is this manna. Now pause. Remember Manna was supernatural. Manna was free as well. <laughs> and what would happen is every morning they would come out, and as the dew of, would lift off the ground, what would be left were these, these white flakes. And manna actually means, what is it? We still don't know what exactly it was. But it ended up, when you crumble it up, it almost made like a flower. And they said it tasted like honey. So they got to eat sweet, honey-tasting bread, food, for free all the time. So it's not like that they have a bad deal here. But you notice what it said we got to eat fish for free in Egypt. Isn't it amazing how time has a way of kind of blunting some trauma a lot of times? You, you have a way of seeing the past through rose-colored glasses sometimes. They were slaves. You know why it was free? It was free because they had to go get it. And they had to go get it and get it for all of their like slave owners as well. So really, it wasn't free at all. That fish was the price of their lives. But right now, because they got this free food called manna, they're looking at their Egyptian bondage as though it wasn't that big a deal. And you imagine how like just, just ridiculous that is, right? Here we go. Verse 7. The manna looked like small coriander seeds. It was pale yellow like gum resin. 
The people would go out and gather it from the ground, and they made flour by grinding it into hand mills or powder, uh, pounding it with mortars. Then they would boil it in a pot and make it into flat cakes. These cakes tasted like pastries baked with olive oil. <laughs> the manna came down on the camp with the dew during the night. Moses heard all the families standing in the doorways of their tents whining, and the Lord became extremely angry. Moses was also very aggravated. Moses said to the Lord, Why are you treating me, your servant, so harshly? Have mercy on me. What did I do to deserve the burden of all these people? Do I give birth? Did I give birth to them? Did I bring them into the world? Did I... Why did you tell me to carry them in my arms like a mother carries a nursing baby? How can I carry them to the land you swore to give their ancestors? Where am I supposed to get meat for all these people? They keep whining to me saying, give us meat to eat. I can't carry all these people by myself. The load is far too heavy. If this is how you intend to treat me, just go ahead and kill me. Do me a favor and spare me this misery. So what's happening is, is every day the Israelites are coming back to Moses and they're complaining. Now, now think about this. They're eating donuts every day. NLT version said it tasted like pastries. They're eating donuts every day and they're going, you know, I remember back when I was in Egypt. Yeah, I was a slave. I didn't get, I didn't have any power over my own life. And, you know, they, they told me when to live. And they, they told me when to die. But I had fish. <laughs> I had to cook that fish. I had to go get that fish. I do it. But, you know, I had fish. Joker, you're eating donuts every day. What have you got to complain about? And it's free. But they did. And once again, it's easy for us to get all like that. Do we not do the same thing? How many times, I'm just going just to be real honest with you. How many times have I sat in a coffee shop with somebody? I watched them drive up with a brand new car. I see them wearing brand new clothes. They have a, a $1,500 iPhone in their hands. They just paid for a $6 coffee. And you know what they say? God, why, uh, Pastor, why does God bless everybody but me? Why does it seem like everything's going wrong in my life? Why does it seem like that just God don't seem to care about me? And can I tell you, I almost want to get so angry until I look at myself and I go, well, you know, I drove up here in a car that works. I'm wearing clothes that fit. I just bought a $6 coffee. I got an iPhone. We are spoiled. <laughs> that is what we are. And here's the thing is that Moses sees this. Moses is talking about them like they're kids. And he's saying, God, I can't handle these kids. Can you just kill me now and get it over with? And that's what he's having to deal with. So before we get too upset at these Israelites, we realize this is a picture of us as well. And we're going to figure out what God's going to do about it. Verse 6, 16 says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Gather before me 70 men who are recognized as elders and leaders of Israel. Bring them to the tabernacle and stand there. Let them stand there with you. I will come down and talk with you there. I will take some of the spirit that is upon you, and I will put the spirit upon them also. And they will bear the burden of the people along with you, so you will not have to carry it alone. And say to the people, purify yourselves, for tomorrow you will have meat to eat. You are whining, and the Lord heard you when you cried, Oh, for some meat. We were better off in Egypt. Now the Lord will give you meat, and you will have it to eat. And it won't just be for a day or two or five, or ten days, or even twenty. You will eat it for a whole month until you gag and are sick of it. For you have rejected the Lord who is here among you, and you have whined to him, saying, Why do we ever leave Egypt? But Moses responded to the Lord, Lord, there are 600,000 foot soldiers here with me, and yet you say, I will give them meat for a whole month? Even if we butchered our entire flocks and herds, would that satisfy them? Even if we caught all the fish in the sea, would that be enough? Then the Lord said to Moses, Has my arm lost its power? Now you will see whether or not my word comes true. Even Moses turned into a complainer, and even Moses didn't hardly believe it. God's going to get the last laugh. Here we go, verse 24. So Moses went out and reported the Lord's words to all the people. He gathered the 70 elders and stationed them around the tabernacle. And the Lord came down in a cloud and spoke to Moses. Then he gave the 70 elders the same spirit that was upon Moses. And when the Spirit rested upon them, they prophesied. But this never happened again. Two men, Eldad and Medad, had stayed behind in the camp. And they were listed among the elders, but they had not gone out to the tabernacle. Yet the Spirit rested upon them as well, so they prophesied in the camp. A young man ran and reported to Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. Joshua, the son of Nun, who had been with Moses' assistant since his youth, protested, Moses, my master, make them stop. 
And Moses replied, Are you jealous for my sake? I wish that all the Lord's people were prophets and that the Lord would put his spirit upon all of them. Then Moses returned to the camp with the elders of Israel. So what happened was, is Moses realizes the burden is too heavy for him. And so he tells God, God, I'm going I'm, I'm to need some help here. And God's like, you're right. You need some help. So here's 70 elders, and I'm going to put that, that spirit of leadership, that spirit of, of seeking after me and, and leading the people. I'm going to put that same characteristic on them. And it wasn't just a characteristic, but it was the spirit of God resting on them, even to the point that they began to prophesy, proclaim the goodness of God. And what I love about this is in that moment where Eldad and Medad are doing that, Moses is like, man, I wish everybody would do that. <laughs> I wish everybody would get so full of God that they just proclaim the goodness of God to everybody. My goodness, leave them alone <laughs> because he's just so excited now that somebody else carries that fire and passion for God, not just him. All right, let's finish this up. Remember, be careful what you ask for. Verse 31, now the Lord sent a wind and brought quail from the sea and let them fall all around the camp. For miles in every direction, there were quail flying about three feet above the ground. So the people went out and caught the quail all day and throughout the night and the next day too. No one gathered less than 50 bushels. They spread the quail all around the camp to dry. But while they were gorging themselves on meat, while it was still in their mouths, the anger of the Lord blazed against the people, and he struck them with a severe plague. So that place was called Kerbath Hatava, which means graves of gluttony, because they buried the people who had craved meat from Egypt there. From Kerbath Hatava, the Israelites traveled to Hezeroth, and they stayed there for some time. So they complained and complained and complained. And then what God did, what a lot of scholars think that happened is, is there was this massive migration of quail. We don't exactly know why. It was a miracle. Massive migration of quail who went over the sea. When it happened, a strong wind was against them. And so it was causing them to have to flap their wings a lot more than they would have. And it exhausted them. So when they finally made it across the sea and they're there, they're just completely without any kind of energy. And so instead of just flying away, they're just barely flying off the ground. And so the Israelites were able just to go and grab them. And it was a complete, total, amazing miracle. But even then, instead of eating it the way they were supposed to, they began to gorge themselves and they began to anger the Lord again. And so God gave them what they wanted and they still complained. But once again, the big principle of this is be careful what you ask for. Trust God with what he has given you because you may not like what you want. You ever heard this phrase before, the grass is always greener on the other side of the fence? And the reality is, it is. Sometimes it is. Sometimes the grass really is greener on the other side of the fence. But here's the thing. If the grass is greener, the water bill is also higher. <laughs> There's a reason why it's there. And you may not be willing to pay the price in order to have what you want. So the lesson for us here is, first of all, to notice how blessed we really are. They had free manna. They had free donuts to eat every single day. But they wanted what they didn't have. How many times do we do that? Instead of complaining about what we don't have, what if we took a day? What if your homework assignment today was to look around at everything you have? If you're listening to this podcast right now, are you listening to it on a smartphone? How much did that cost you? If you're watching this on YouTube, how much did it cost you to have that device? Not, not something to feel bad about. It's something to be grateful for. Are you in the car right now? What... How, How'd you get that car? It was a blessing, wasn't it? And so instead of saying, God, I wish I had something else, what if we took an entire day and we thanked God for what we already have instead of asking for something else? Now, I want to finish this up. I want to, I want to pray for us. I'm going to read our scripture, and then we're going to be done for today. So God's been talking to us. Now, let's talk to him. You ready? Here we go. Father, thank you so much that you have blessed us more than we can understand. Your blessings are all around us. Your blessings are for us and not against us. I pray, God, you will open our eyes to see the blessings we have, even the very heartbeat that we have, or the breath that we take in. All of this is a blessing from you. And to realize, God, that we are blessed, and we can take that blessing, and it can be a never-ending source of joy. Thank you for loving us in the way you do, even despite sometimes when we complain. You still love us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right. Numbers chapter 6, verse 24 says this. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace. I love you. I'll see you next time for Numbers chapter 12.